Hi, and welcome to another episode of Coffee with Mirko, episode number 50. So thank you. Thank you for being here. It means the world to me. I'm very excited because for the 50th episode, we're going to talk to an incredibly young, talented, already established young fellow named Irvin uh, Quack. And... Uh, perfect way to celebrate episode 50. We wouldn't have managed to get to 50 episodes if it wasn't for you and you and you and you. So thank you from the bottom of my heart. I really hope that you enjoy this and we'll be able to just have a good time with uh, Irvine and uh, we'll, we're definitely excited to have him on and you'll be free to ask all the questions. If you're really listening to this podcast or if you are signing off because you can't stay for the whole length, I would love and appreciate you uh, sharing this and uh, just let other people know and uh, screenshot it so we can grow this community and uh, he's here. So let's bring him on. Waiting for him. Here we go. Hello. Hey, man. Good to hey. see you. Good to meet you. Good to see you. How are you? I'm fantastic. More, very excited to have you on. Thank you uh, for giving us your time. And uh, I really appreciate you being here. And uh, it's just going to be a great hour. And uh, I'm very happy. It's my pleasure, man. Thank you for the invitation. And no, I'm really excited for, for today. Thank you. And, and first and foremost, apologize, but you got to tell me how to pronounce your name properly. Okay. Irvin, Irvine, Arvin. <laughs> Most of the people, they call me Irvin. Irvin? Yeah, so you can just call me Irvin. However you prefer, but Irvin, thank you for being here, and uh, it's an honor meeting you. What's up? Um, What's the question? First question that I want to ask you is, how are you and your family with the whole lockdown and okay. virus and all situation? Um, actually, we just back to normal right now. I mean, after three months of the lockdown, and then start from the end of June, everything is getting better. Yeah, the situations, and then I can see that the pandemic is slightly going down, and the business of the cafe is everything good. Glad to hear, glad to hear. And uh, uh, Irvin, uh, you're one of the youngest yet most inspirational baristas out there for many of us. Uh, can you please tell us uh, how you started your coffee journey for people who don't know? Okay, um, I started my career when I was 16 years old. So by the time I was studying and then I worked as a part-time in, in a barista career. So um, I, I have no idea about specialty coffee and then latte arts at that time, but I just want to earn some money and to buy myself a new phone. So that's why, uh, luckily, I found a barista job. And then when I was 17, uh, that, that period is the time that I really fall in love with coffee. And then... I realized that actually I love working in the cafe environment more than sitting in a classroom in a school. So I, yeah. decide, I decided to quit studying and then to work as a full-time barista. So 17 years old, I quit studying and then I work as a full-time barista. And that's how, how my journey starts. So yeah. uh, when I was 18, I joined my first national latte art competition without any expectation, but I get sixth place in the national. So it's actually the result brings me a lot of the confidence. And then I, I told myself that, okay, maybe I should keep going because it's not a really bad result, right, for the first year. So yeah, that's how I began. And I, and I love the fact that you had no expectations. I think it's a very... A uh, key element for many things in life. Yes. The minute that you have expectations, lots of weird things happen. Um, yeah. And then obviously you 
became world ATR champion. Um, how important was that achievement for you, as well for your country? Okay, so everybody recognized me as a youngest world champion instead of, wow, Irving's skill is crazy. Yeah, maybe some of them, but most of them, they recognize me as the youngest world champion. Mm -hmm. So uh, when I heard about this, I have a goal. I have a new goal in my career, which is to inspire more young barista or even non-barista people, but a youngster, inspire them to keep doing what they love because I really believe that everyone can be a champion, you know, no matter in which industry, no matter you are in a football or basketball or barista, everyone can be a champion. So for me, uh, after I get the world champion, I'm really happy for that because I really inspired a lot of the young barista in Malaysia because you know that uh, in Malaysia, the specialty coffee scene is not really matured as uh, Australia and most of the country around there. So we are just started a few years ago. So this is one of our greatest achievements uh, for the past few years. So I create, I set a benchmark for them and then I make their dream become not too blur, you know, becoming very clear that, okay, I should fight for it and then I should go for it. So I'm the first one who opened this, uh, set a new benchmark for my own country. And then for the baristas around the world, um, they, they all know that if you want to become a champion, you need to spend a couple years, five years, seven years, four years, two years, but I get it for the first years. So I, what I want to say is actually um, people, people always talk about there is no shortcut to success, right? But for me, the only shortcut to success is learning. And then you need to find a right person to learn and then uh, let them to pass on their experience to you. And then you create a shortcut to success. So before I joined the World Latia Championship, I learned a lot with the previous world champions like Arnon, Ampo, Caleb Pagicha, and then still have lots and lots of, uh, of the great baristas. So I create the shortcuts, shorter, 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 and shorter. And then when I'm on the stage, when I prepare for the competition, it's like much easier than I think here. Yeah. I think it's fantastic and very inspirational as well as relevant because there's a lot of young people out there. And I, and I actually am um, quite, I'm quite passionate about this topic. Uh, for instance, Someone who is watching now is, uh, her name is Bianca. She's only 16 and she started roasting and brewing. She's from Indonesia. And, uh, and basically, I'm happy that you're here because it's even more of a boost for her and other people. Well, I mean, do you have any advice for young people out there who are chasing a passion for coffee, but they actually stuck with what their parents, society, what the world <laughs> tell them to be a good job okay. or to study or to you know they should do this or that yeah so this is what i'm trying to change after i get the world champion because i face a lot of these problems back then before i get the world champion title so when i started to work as a full-time barista when i was 17 that time you know my parents and then my family all of the people, the, the elder people around me, they told me that, okay, man, you should study. And then after you study, only you decided what you want to do. Okay. But for me, I really clear that I want to be a barista. And then I can see that being a barista have a very bright future ahead, right? Because we have a lot of the role model in the industry, like uh, those champion barista in the industry, right? So you see them, you see your goal and you see your future. So why not listen to me, uh, let me to become a good barista. And then uh, for me, actually, I show my parents about the champion barista. I show them like, okay, you see this guy, this is the world champion. And he is actually doing very well. So uh, most importantly, you have to tell your parents, convince them that they make a lot of money. 
right? <laughs> because what you are worried about is uh, after you, you join as a barista, you couldn't make money. Right? Of course. So I convinced them, I showed them how other world champions be like, and then I told them they earn a lot of money. But for me, actually, I have no idea. I just want to work as a barista. And then uh, for the people around me, actually, I think most of the young barista, they have these problems, and this is really serious. Because for me, back then, uh, when I worked, worked as a barista, I don't even dare to tell the people around me that I'm actually a barista because they have no idea how professional is this job. And then when you, I feel like when I told them, I want to, uh, I'm a barista, and then I feel very shame. So this is a very serious problem because I don't make a lot of money and then barista job is not a common uh, perfect job for the young people. It's very tired and then you need to spend a lot of time. You get a very low income at the beginning. But after that, uh, I create my own vision. I create my own goal. And then I have a lot of the mission to be done. So... Slowly, day by day, I have more confidence to tell people that I'm a barista, I make great coffee, and I have a very good hospitality. So I have more confidence to tell the people around me about how great is the barista job. So for yeah. the young people, I mean, if you really like it, if you really have uh, no idea how to convince the people around you, uh, look at the role model and then show them how great they they are actually. But uh, the only advice I want to give is don't give up halfway. If you give up halfway, uh, all the things that you told people before is the trash. You know. Yeah. They will, they I will get you. Down, they will look down on you, and also they will uh, look down the barista career at the same time because you cannot prove it, right? Yep, yep, correct. Um, and uh, GB is saying hi to you, so... Uh, and, uh, I mean, and to, what I liked what you said earlier on is that it's also about other industry as well, right? So, for instance, you know, how much easier it is when you do something that you actually love and you're passionate about, right? For instance, from my understanding, you always had a passion for art and drawing, yeah? yeah. So... I think it's important to dig in first in terms of self-awareness, find what you like and love, not just the industry, but specific, right? Because coffee, you can be barista, brewer, uh, cafe owner, roaster, farmer, importer, blogger, photographer, any jobs. Once you understand what your passion and love, it's easier to actually go 100%, like you were saying. Yeah. So, so that's that's what I think. What you what you write? I I mean, uh, we talk about a personal personal stuff. Uh, it is, I I can say it is a life decision. So in your life, you can choose to be whatever you want to be: doctor, police, and then even the bomba, or the barista or chef. So you have to make the first decision to choose your career. And then when you get into your career, you have to choose the second decisions, which is your uh, profession and specialist. So example for me, I choose latte arts and I want to be professional as I can and I want to be specialist on latte arts. And then the third decision, which is your future. So when you choose latte arts, you choose barista, you have to decide uh, maybe after five or 10 years, what kind of person you want to be and then what you want to achieve, right? So, I mean, making the decision is very important for now and also think far for your future. Yeah. If, you, if you didn't have a vision, you will get lost in halfway. I love it. And also you mentioned it before, you know, especially for the super young ones to have a mentor, a guru, someone to look up to. And sometimes I think people are a little bit, they get stopped uh, by themselves even to reach out. But how easy it is today to connect or even try to connect 
send a direct message like I did with you, an email, uh, uh, a text message. It doesn't really take much. And who knows, then you might be able to connect with Irvin, GB, Sasha, Aga, and many other professionals. And who knows, maybe you meet in person. And I think that that's super important. I think that a lot of people, if the goal is to improve working with someone that you look up to would be the end goal to start. Yeah. Speaking of starting, do you, do you agree that competition for you was not a destination, but was a starting point? Okay. Uh, back then, I have no idea about what I'm aiming for, but just only one thing in my mind that for sure I want to make it one day, which is to become the world champion. So, uh, the competition stage and then the champion title for all the baristas is actually, you, you cannot treat it as a main goal and your destination. You can only treat it as uh, something that build your confidence and to kickstart your journey. Because you have no idea what will happen after you get the world champion. So if you get a champion, you get a key. If you didn't use it properly, the key will be useless. So uh, for the competition, it's a very big dream, but it's not the destination for me. So you have to just uh, prove on the stage to prove yourself. And after that, you need to convince the people around the world to uh, believe in you and to look up to you. That is most important to be inspiring. Mm -hmm. So, um, talking about how to reach out the, the person that you look up to, uh, before that, I, I, I have no idea about this kind of stuff because for me, that time, I only care about, okay, I'm too busy to reply or something, not even a, a short message or anything else. But after one year, when I, when I look at the young, passionate baristas around me, in my country, I feel very sorry about those people that I have missed their message for the past year. So start from that time, I, I try my best to comment on their post if they tag me. And then I try to reply every single one of them with my heart and then with my sincere and try to help whatever I can help. Mm -hmm. But when talk about this, there is a very uh, serious, uh, very serious uh, thing to talk about, because every every time when we learn, we go for the class, we hire a coach, and then we join this and that, and we paid it. Okay, we pay to learn. We pay to learn to create a shortcut for our journey. So maybe some of the people, they have no idea about this. So they were just uh, asking you questions like taking it as a granted. So for me, I don't want to be rude, but I just uh, reply every single thing that I can reply. If Correct. I cannot reply, I will yeah. tell them, okay, sorry, this is, uh, this is not uh, convenient to tell you, but maybe you can uh, stay tuned for my academy or stuff like that. Okay. I think I think it was a, there's a certain level of mutual respect, right? And you gotta be selective. Yeah. I think that uh, there's some people that are even even if I'm much smaller, but some people approach me directly and they're like, oh, you know, and they send me directly their resume. And and for me, that's just not the right approach. I think instead they need to start with the idea of how can I add value to this mentor, right? Which you could be, you know, putting hard work, being a friendship, being someone that can actually help your business yourself and then improve themselves with their Instagram page, with their work, with their passion, what they do, right? I mean, just to give you an example, I mean, sorry to bring you up again, Bianca, but Bianca drove nine hours to have a masterclass with Mikael uh, Justin. That's that's commitment. That you can see that, and it's like okay, maybe there's something here to invest. And and going back on the competition, I think it's not just about winning. I think 
it's about enjoying the process of it, right? Yeah, so definitely. from getting comfortable with losing to constantly practicing. And I think that to get there, people should need to find their why, their purpose. Yeah. Why are you doing it? Then you can start looking at all these other things. True. Totally agree, man. And in your opinion, when it came down to your... Uh, to your personal competition and story, uh, what was your secret that pushed you to just keep going, pushing the limits? Mm. So this is the the other advice that I want to give to all the young baristas, because mm -hmm. everyone they are just looking into the skills and tools, and also uh, searching for a good platform to prove themselves. But in the other way round we need to have a very good mindset to become the person that we want to be. So for me, I think the main, main ingredient, I would say ingredient, I love it. Me to, to help me to get a world champion, which is my mentality and my mindset. Okay. So how to become a champion with a very good mindset? For example, are you willing to accept the feedback from all of the people around you? So uh, when I prepare for the World Latia competition, every design that I create, I will show to my customers and then I will ask for the feedback. How do you think about this design? Is it uh, can tell you directly what it is or is it confusing you or something? So their feedback might not really helpful for you, but they will help you to open another circle inside your mind to create something else. So this is the most important thing. And then secondly, uh, are you willing to learn from the best? Because there is one word in this world, they, they mention it about if you want to be the best, you learn from the best, right? It's very straightforward. It's very straightforward. Uh, doesn't mean that if you didn't learn from the best, you couldn't be the best. Still can, you can do it. but. If you learn with, learn from the best, you create a very short, short, shortcut to become the best. Because yes. they they been through a lot of things, and then they know the game, they know how to score, and they know how to have a very good mentality and everything. So, uh, the second second one, my advice to all is to get ready yourself to invest some money to learn but not just keep practicing, 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 okay? And then the third one, put down your ego, put down your ego, and then always learn from the zero. Life yeah. is like a water bottle. If the water is filled up, you need to throw away and then to fill the new one. You cannot just keep the bottle filled and then just go the whole journey. You cannot improve and you cannot do anything. So three important advice for the people uh, who wanted to be uh, inspiring baristas or who wanted to be a champion. Yeah, and I think ego is a big one as well because uh, it's actually this, this stuff really juices me up. Like I love this stuff uh, more than almost more than coffee. I think I think that some people with big egos as well they're victims themselves of uh, society of. Uh, big scams, you know, like get rich quick schemes. Um, and it's a fast paced life, isn't it? You know, it's everything is live. Everything is instant. It's like Uber and technology, fast speed processing information. Uh, we're getting bombarded. And what happens is people get a little bit confused where ego kicks in is where people assume that you can just make it very fast right and what often happens is that that practice practice turns into hassle by an unhealthy way and they yeah. burn out it's they burn true. out because they don't leave themselves time for uh, you don't have to be a meditation meditation you don't have to do yoga all those cliche things but just having just going for a walk listening to music uh, uh going for a swim enjoying a car ride uh, enjoying I don't know, piece of music without looking at your phone for half an hour. It doesn't have to be complicated to be with yourself and slow pace, right? In my country, we say 
don't take a step longer than your leg, you're gonna <laughs> trip. Yeah, true. Yeah, so, makes sense. It's like a uh, hard working is a very good start to become the best. So you have to be hard working, right? Practice. But if you are uh, using hard working in the wrong way, things are getting worse, man. Yeah. Like this is the road to success. If you work hard, it's good. But this is the road to fail, and you work hard to the road, and your destination will be fail and fail and fail. Yeah. I agree, man. I love it. I think it's super relevant, and I think this has so many applications, right? Coffee is one of them, but there's so many industries that we see this all the times, and and it's a circle, right? It's like from where we started. If your if your starting point is an industry that you don't like, that you've been forced into, burnout is just going to be a very natural organic consequence much quicker, because all of a sudden you put, for example, money, success, or fame as your main objective rather than happiness. And I understand that some countries is more difficult and some others are more privileged um, than others. I really respect that. I was lucky to. I was born in a comfortable position, not rich, not poor. And, but something that's still important, no matter where you're born, my parents, I was lucky, they always asked me one question around my decision, right? They might give them, they might tell me their opinion. But the last question my mom and dad would ask me is, are you happy? Yes. Success <laughs> will come. That's fine. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, man. So uh, I have been working with a lot of the young barista, which is now no work, not working with me anymore because they are facing the same problems. They choose to become a barista because okay, Irving is quite cool. It's very cool to become a barista, and then oh, oh, world champion! I want to work with the world champion, and then I think this is my my dream to become the world champion in the barista or even latte art. So when they spend like a three months in the cafe, they quit. Why? Because they didn't ask themselves, "Is it this is the thing that will make you happy?" You know, you you cannot just be strict by others for your decision. Is I I feel sad in the other way because I am their inspiration to become a barista, and then halfway they quit. But at the same time, I feel happy for them because they didn't uh, waste too much time to decide, even uh, whether they want to continue or not. So yeah, ha happiness is the most important thing, and then for me, happiness will brings you a very long journey, and then a very successful journey because if you happy to work in your career, and then you will think about the other people's. I'm happy. You happy or not? You are not happy. Why? And then you will create something to brings up the value that you are working in. Hundred percent. And then all of a sudden, you find yourself surrounded by people who want to be around you, not because of who and what you are, but because of that happiness that you're really spreading out. Right. So I think it's super important. Um, Thank you. Thanks for sharing that. I think it's very relevant and very valuable. Irvin, um, we reached the half mark, and during these interviews, I always ask this out of the box question to my guests. Um, if you could choose, and it could be anyone outside coffee, uh, who would you like to have dinner with? Sorry, can I can you say it again? Uh, who would you like to have dinner with? Oh, anyone. Anyone. It doesn't have to be coffee, whoever you want. Who I want to have dinner with, I think probably will be Michael Jordan, man. Hell yeah, yeah. Yeah, because I really love his dedication on basketballs, and then his spirit is just the true spirit of a champion, you know? That, that is what we talk about, the champion mentality. You have a very very clear destination, and then you know what to do. Uh, you know how to put down your ego, and then you know how to uh, prove yourself on the stage. So I really love him. 
Have you watched his documentary, Last Dance? Yes, I finished it. Eh? <laughs> I really enjoyed it. Actually, it's funny because um, uh, Rubens Gardelli recommended me to watch it. So, yeah, it's, it's, nice. yeah, it's very good. It's very good. I liked it too. Um, and going back on, you know, more coffee-based question, um, I was reading another question before. Uh, going back to latte art, and I know you're not just about latte art, but at least one question for the people going to rewatch this. What's the very first advice that you usually give to someone who's new? And I'm talking brand new, like whether it's a home barista or professional, it doesn't matter. Okay. Um, if there is a random people wanted to work in my place, the first thing that I will tell them is what is your hobby? Example, uh, there is a random guy told me that his hobby is basketball. So from that, I know, okay, this guy must have a very good teamwork to work in a team. And then the second question, I will ask, ask the people, how if your customers drop the glass and spill on their pants? So from the answer that they give you, you will know that, okay, this guy have a very good hospitality foundation. So you will know them, is it they care for the customers or not? And then the last questions I will ask about, uh, if customers ask you some coffee information and you are not sure about it, what would you do? Some people answer me that, okay, I will Google search, that's funny. Some people, they will, ask, uh, they will answer me that, okay, I will just look for my senior baristas. But that is not good enough for me. If you answer me that, okay, I will look for my senior baristas, and then after that, I will learn by myself with Google or ask for my senior to teach me to make sure that today, uh, these things that I don't know about, tomorrow I will learn. So from that, I will, because I, I'm, I'm that kind of person that I really look into the personality of the workers, you know, because this is how to determine their passion in the coffee. I get you. And I think it's such a, it's such a key point, right? Because it's about, it's a people's business, right? It's. Yeah. We're so focused on the pattern or the brew or the variety, but it really is about the people first because without people, we don't have pickers, we don't have farmers, we don't have roasters, we don't have baristas, and we don't have customers to serve, right? So, and also I hope that the people who are going to apply for the job are going to rewatch this so they should be more prepared for the job interview. <laughs> so I hope they're taking notes if they ever apply for a job uh, uh, at, your, at, your, at your establishment. Um, and in terms of coffee, because we're here now, this topic compared to the first half of the, of the interview, what would you like to see more in the future of coffee? In the future? Mm -mm. Okay. Uh, so I would just talk about milk beverage. I mean, milk coffee, because Thank I'm a latte, you. Are you? Latte, latte art specialist, right? So mm -hmm. my, my vision, my vision start from the day that I get the world champion. My vision is to build up all the champions around the world to create a perfect cup of milk coffee to the consumers. I want to bring the latte arts value higher, higher in the world. Example that all around the world, every barista in the cafe, they serve latte arts like me. That would be really, really insane and the, the value of the latte arts will be very, very high, you know? So this is my vision, is my ultimate goal. I, I, I wish to see the, the crazy latte arts around the world. And then <laughs> beside this, I will like to transform all the latte artists, dream chaser, I would say, transform them into a champion baristas in their life and also uh, uh, entrepreneurial baristas, you know, because end of the day, uh, we work with our passion and we need to earn money. 
So I would like to transform all the young latte artists and dream chaser into a champion entrepreneurial barista for them to have a very good future and very good skills on making coffee. I love it. And you just, I think, I think you just prompt a thought in my brain, which is I really think that we eat with our eyes and that's on, nothing new. We drink with our eyes as well first. Uh, it's such a sensorial experience and surroundings. But I actually would like to see, I don't know why I had this thought, but you popped in my head. I would love to see a menu, a coffee menu where you kind of pay more for certain latte art patterns. And I know they exist already in certain countries, especially when it's like super hand-drawn, you know, plenty of examples around there on Instagram. But I would love to see more and more practice of almost being able to order a pattern, right? Yeah. And being able, I know logistically it will be hard at the moment. So hopefully with technology, with more Uber milks and other type of technology or whatever happens with special mugs or I really hope that because I think the industry needs more money. Coffee is too cheap at a cafe. So we need to find more and more ways like food, like fine dining to try to lift yeah. the price of the menu. That will this keep is, us alive. This is why uh, I'm talking about bring up the latte arts value because if the things have the value, there is a lot of the people could invest something to make it better, right? Like mm -hmm. for example, fine dining, the value is really high. Everybody could pay a lot of money to have fine dining. So that's why there is someone who can invest to create something uh, some technology which is very good to bring even higher value for the fine dining. So if one day the latte arts value, the, the barista, the coffee value can be slightly higher, okay, this is another story. So yeah, yeah. also one thing I want to mention about is uh, nowadays there is a lot of the young latte artists. So they they are very passionate on doing the latte arts but Sometimes I feel sad about uh, how they make a cup of coffee because they don't even care about the taste and all. So maybe a, a complex design. So, okay, it's a complex design and it is very beautiful, but come on, man, you spend two minutes to make one pattern that is too long. So for me, maximum one minute to pour because the milk and the coffee, you know, the quality will drop after a long time, right? So first, they have to understand about you practice the latte arts for what? You really, you really have to understand about this, this fact because end of the day, your coffee is for your customers, but not for your own fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah I love it. And I think, correct me if I'm wrong, but I see a lot of baristas as well. Whilst I was work, I've been nine years around the coffee industry in different roles. And uh, I think that some of those baristas is also talking about ego. They put so much attention and care, let's say in latte art, that they forget about the customer who orders their names. How are they? And sometimes just raise your head and look around at what you created more than the cup. You know, look at someone sipping the coffee happy. You just made someone day because you remember his name is or uh, hey, it's you, John. Skinny latte with two, no problem, on its way. And you maybe have a small interaction. And when someone receives a complaint when you're talking about feedback, right, I think it's important not just the feedback from judges, but also important from your customers, right? Because I know that a professional knows more than the consumer, however, that can become very quickly in the arrogant sphere if we just shut all the feedback out from the customers. Oh, I know better than you. But because we are hospitality, we need to be more approachable. Okay. So, yeah, I totally agree what you have said. Uh, I mean, for me, the, the customers will not always write, but they are always our, our guests, you know? Maybe they are wrong, but they are our guests. So come on, man. We, we just have to try our best to serve the best to our guests, but not because our ego and then 
told them, okay, you don't know anything about coffee. I know more than you. So this cup of coffee you think is bad, for me, it's good. If you want to drink, you drink. If you don't want to drink, you just get out. Not, not something like that. And then when we talk about uh, crafting coffee, yes, like what you have mentioned just now, just to raise up your head and to say hi with your customers. And then if you remember their name, it's much better. So in our cafe, we have a culture that our regular customers, we will ask them like, what art do you want today? Or maybe they will choose what patterns they want uh, after they saw our Instagram or something. So we need to remember that, okay, these customers, she like uh, cute stuff. So maybe I could prepare a cute latte art patterns for her. And then, okay, this guy, he don't like something cute. So maybe I, I can create something that is very cool for him. Yeah, I love it. Hospitality. That's amazing. Uh, I think it's a great idea. And, 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 and like you say, and all of a sudden you're connecting and guess what? That person is just going to be happier and you just made someone's day, hour, 15 minutes just with something as simple as asking a simple question. Yep. And Irvin, since you started your career, you've always been pushing your, uh, the boundaries of coffee and latte art based on your pillars. How important is the concept of patience to you? Um, I, I mean, this is about the characteristic in, for every person because I'm, I'm that kind of person that if I want to do something good, I will spend almost my lifetime just to make it right. If today I have problems on the latte arts, I couldn't sleep, man, you know? You know what I'm saying? So I just need to find out a solution to solve the problems that happen today. So automatically, I have a lot of the patience uh, while I'm doing the latte arts. And then because of latte arts, I, I actually change a lot in my life. I used to be a very angry person that full of ego. And then uh, I, want, I want everything to be quick and fast. I don't like to take it slow and nice. And then people around me will easily get go if they're working with me. So by doing the latte arts and along the journey, I have changed a lot about my personality. And then, yeah, also the, the champion title uh, makes me have the responsibility to be a better person because I don't want uh, the people downstairs have a very bad role model. Okay, Irving latte art is great, but his personality sucks. I don't want this happen because I don't want to disappoint those people around me who love me and yeah. And, and you know, because uh, you good personality, uh, even though we don't know each other in person, hopefully one day, but I, I, I can tell, and I heard a lot about you from others as well in the, in the game. And, and look, I mean, Rome wasn't built in a day, right? That's how they say it. Um, I mean, I think it's important what would you say to people? Because a lot of people get frustrated, right? They, they work in a cafe, they spend the extra hours, and they they can barely do a love heart. The milk is bubbly, and then they go on Instagram and they see and they see perfect eagle, camel, uh, you know, all those crazy patterns, huskies and bears, polar bears, <laughs> and they get frustrated. However, there's also connection with other areas in life, right? We don't feel good about our bodies and we go on Instagram and you have perfectly shaped men and women or, you know, we don't feel good about our financial situation and we see these people who drive all these cars and have this lifestyle. How can people disconnect from the outside noise just take what's needed as information like, you know, your work without being frustrated and by actually keep enjoying patiently the journey of learning. So, I, I mean, you have to find the purpose of living before you get into something. So, if your purpose of living is to get rich, to drive all those Lamborghini, Ferrari, and then to have a, a lot of the branded stuff on you, 
So come on, man. The barista job is not for you. You can just walk away and then to do something else. Okay? But if your purpose of living is to be happy on what you love to do, okay. If you love to work as a barista, just go ahead and enjoy your life. You know, maybe someday you will get very rich because of your success and because of your skills, your knowledge and your personality. Nobody knows. So if you get rich because of the things that you love, for me, this is more important. All right. I don't want to get rich because of the things that I don't love to do. Mm -hmm. I feel very empty, you know? Yeah. Of course, and, and that's beautiful. I think what I what I meant was a lot of people tend to do. We compare each other, right? There's a com the, we compare ourselves to so many people, and then we get a little bit deflated, depressed, and we give up because I can't pour more than one tulip, and then I see Caleb, you, Umpo, like and, you know, Anna, and I see all these people. Not me, just hypothetical person and they get frustrated and I guess a little bit deflated they feel beaten they feel lost how important is for them not to get frustrated and not comparing to others but rather take inspiration it's it's a it's a tricky balance um, I still remember back in five years ago when I just started to play with the latte arts that time we have not much latte arts video and photos on Instagram and then we only have YouTubes and there is just some of the videos that you can learn. So I, I cannot forget that I watch Anon videos almost every day. So when I watch that video, my feeling is, wow, I want to pour like this maybe one day, okay? So every day I learn, I learn, I try. I watched the video more than a thousand times just to observe his movement and then to observe every single details in the pouring process. Okay? So sometimes I feel like, okay, I cannot make it. I cannot make it really. I cannot make it. I tried too hard, but I cannot make it. But the next second, I would think, why? Why I cannot make it? So I need to find out why. I very frustrated about why I cannot make it and at the same time why he can make it come on so I cannot ask Arnon directly how you make it but I need to observe all the abilities that he have to help him to to successfully pour a good latte art so why for yourself and why for others so if you really want to do do it great, you, you need to push yourself a little bit harder and to be strict on yourself. Yeah. And I also think it's important that we are all unique and just to be yourself. Yes. Be you. Be you because you will never be Irvin. You will never be Anand. So learn a lot of things. Watch, observe, study. But ultimately, don't compare because otherwise you fall into the trap and then you're not going to progress because you're too scared that you're not good enough and your self-confidence goes down versus yeah. take that negative energy and turn it into positive to actually be motivated and say, well, if Irvin did it, if Arnold did it, I can too in my way, in my style, and guess what? With my time. It's never too early, it's never too late. A little patience go a long way because hey, guess what? Life is not a sprint. It's not a hundred meter run, it's a marathon. It doesn't matter how fast you run the first 100 meters, it doesn't matter. If then you're tired and you can't finish the, the circuit, then it doesn't matter how fast you run. So 100%. And talking about the industry and coffee in general, the coffee industry is far from perfect. I think there's so much more to improve. If you could change one thing, what would that be? Hmm. I, I wish that in the industry, 
if I could change something, I wish that all of the categories of baristas, we can come a little bit closer together and to build up a better community. Because you know, I, uh, okay, because I'm a world champion, so I can easily talk with people, but I'm not sure whether they like it or not, but I have the privilege to make friends with a lot of people. But imagine that all those young boys, little girls uh, around me, they love latte arts, but somehow they feel, uh, feel bad because they couldn't get into the barista gang. Because the barista people will think that, okay, you bunch of kids, you are just playing around with the milk. Okay, I feel sad about it. But also the barista people maybe couldn't uh, get into latte art gangs because the latte art gangs feel like they are the best. I craft beautiful, perfect latte arts. What are you doing pouring a round or hardship on a competition stage? I mean, come on. We are all barista, right? You make milk coffee, you make milk coffee. We both make milk coffee. But most importantly, we both very serious on making a good cup of coffee, okay? So why not all the categories like getting closer a little bit more to build up a better community? I, I mean, this will change a lot, will make a very big difference. I love it. And I, and I think it's super important because uniting rather than dividing will always win in anything, yeah. right? And guess what? Um, John might be better than me at stacking tulips, but I am better at talking with customer. Yes, that's true. Right? Then, or Jennifer is better at coming up with ideas with for, you know, signature drinks. Or, so basically play each other's strengths to build a stronger, united family, a big family, uh, because at the end of the day, specialty coffee is in danger for many aspects. Climate change, coffee price, commercial, commercialized coffee, coffee chains, the list goes on. But if instead of picking on each other, like you said, different categories, we actually get all together like a big family, like you said, that would make a big difference. So I like that. Um, before I ask you the last question, Irving, because it's already been an hour, which is crazy. Wow. <laughs> I know. Um, first and foremost, uh, thank you for coming in. It was super nice to meet you. Super humbling. And I'm full of gratitude for what you said. And people will really listen and rewatch this. Will appreciate what you had to say from such a young age. And yet, I always, something I've always been passionate about growing up is that I wanted to grow up and don't be the adult who picked on youngsters, but help them. Uh, because it, a lot of older people don't understand this, but it's very logical. Young people will become our future engineer, architect, dentist, uh, doctor, surgeon, barista. We need to help them versus picking at them and pointing fingers at them. We need to help them. And I really appreciate what you're doing for all the people and younger and your age and the coffee community and giving us your stories and beautiful things that you shared. Um, so thank you. I'm very grateful for it. Um, you're welcome, man. What's next on Irvin's planet? What's next for you, man? Um, just keep going for my vision, you know, to transform mm -hmm. all the latte artists into uh, entrepreneurial champion baristas and also trying my best to bring up the latte arts value for the mass market and also inside the industry because I really wanted that uh, the young people who work as a barista, they are proud to be a baristas. So I need to set a new benchmark for latte artists, young baristas, and I need to help them to reach their goal. I love it. And look, there's uh, there's so many out there. One of them is, I uh, just pinned her comment. Uh, Bianca is amazing. She's 16. She probably reminds you of yourself only a few years back. She, she actually yeah. sent me, 
she sent me some coffee that she roasted herself and it was delicious. So it's impressive. I don't, I don't, I don't know how to roast that she's roasting, brewing, uh, pouring, uh, exercising everything. And uh, she already found her why and her purpose, which is fantastic. And she was a badass because she rides motorbikes, which I don't even know how to turn it on. Um, but yeah, thank you, Erwin. That was an amazing chat. And I hope that maybe, A, we can meet in real person soon once the borders reopen, maybe at the Worlds in Melbourne or maybe at other times. I would love to have a cup of coffee with you, for real. And then let's do this another time. In a month or two, uh, we'll, we'll catch up again, maybe we'll catch up at your shop um, and we can and we can have a discussion where you're at. You can show us around. Maybe give us a, a virtual tour of your shops and whatnot. I of think it would be very cool. And reading a few comments, Andrea Gassi said, hey, Arvin, we met in uh, Sri Petaling. So he's saying a big shout out to you. And uh, yeah. Thank you, Mirko. I really appreciate that what you have done to all these people and then to create a live show like this. So it is very good for them to have more shortcuts in their journey. Mm. You know what I'm doing. Thank you. I appreciate you, man. We'll, we'll talk soon, I'm sure. Much love. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. There you have it, guys. I, um, it was very humbling uh, being able to talk to Irvin. Um, I've seen him in real person a couple of times, but never had the chance to talk to him. I think that the first half of this interview was very insightful. I think that uh, it doesn't matter whether it's coffee or whether you do food or what you do in life. Uh, what he shared was super deep, and I think that this is the journey, this direction that I want to go. I think uh, these conversations are more helpful than technical, uh, technical ones, uh, just because it's reflection of personalities of people that you look up to. You guys look at Irvin, you just think latte art, latte art, latte art, and yet you gave so many philosophical quotes and philosophical aspects of coffee and life and career, not just about how to pour a rosetta, which is important. I think that I want to create a space where we also share more in depth with people that want to share in depth concepts. Those bring a different type of value, less technical, less transactional, more on a purposeful, meaningful way that can apply to many aspects of life, not just coffee, not just career. And it doesn't matter who you are, what age you are. I don't care. Uh, if it adds value, it adds value. Uh, to one, to 10, to 100, it really doesn't matter. And that's the same with you. Uh, whatever you're doing with your page, with your, with your life, if you're adding value, and sometimes you can give yourself very easy exercises, very easy uh, <laughs> challenges. I would love for all of you tomorrow to walk out and smile at 10 strangers, a big smile, unless you're from very conservative countries. Give a huge smile to 10 people. It doesn't matter if they think that you're strange or weird, just you're going to make their day. Maybe they're sad. Maybe they're not in a great mood. Maybe they're tired. Just give 10 big smiles to 10 strangers. And if you feel very courageous, say hello to 10 strangers and say, hey, how are you? Hope you're well. Have a good day. Um, this to say that it's about people. It's about being humble. It's not just about geisha, latte art, farms. That's all important. That makes the industry. But the first brick foundation is the people, the community, the family, and even Irvin, that's his mission. Um, and that's it. That's a closure from me. I'm going to do more individual podcasts with stuff like I just spoke about. It's my passion. And I'm just going to keep on coming the next uh, couple of days. We've got more lives. If you liked it, please share a screenshot, follow if you don't follow. 
and tell more people about us and we'll love to keep them coming. Five seconds left. Thank you for being here. I appreciate all of you.